Hello, I am Hillary. Welcome to our house. Hillary, thanks so much for having us in your house. I know a lot about your home just from visiting and being friends with you, but how long have you guys lived here? What What are some bigger projects that you guys have done? Um, we have lived here since October of 2018, so five years, a little over five years. Um, big projects. We've actually done the most big stuff outside. We've had the house painted, a new roof put on, um, some work done on the deck. Um, inside has been mostly cosmetic paint and some wallpaper and things like that. Um, we haven't decided if we're going to do anything bigger in here just because this isn't where we're staying long term. And um, I just don't want to put that much money into it. But paint does wonders and I feel like we've transformed the space just with the few things that we've done here. Yeah. And you really put your stamp on it because did you guys have these floating shelves done? We have done. We did do floating shelves here. We did some in our laundry room. Mostly this is an open concept home and I have a lot of things obviously and there just wasn't a spot for furniture to display or anything like that. So um, I just tried to maximize. We have really tall ceilings so I've tried to maximize um, vertical space that way. So I would like to add probably some more shelves in other spaces just so that I have a little more display space. It's hard. I don't know that I would do open concept again for a lot of reasons, but that is one of them. So this is the first time that I've had a shelf to display all of my putts houses. Years prior, I have had them on just kind of tucked in here and there. I put them on our Christmas tree a few times. Um, we always get a live tree for the most part and so, other than this year with our shelves. Um, so they're a little heavy for a live tree, but I love looking at them. And this year I finally got a shelf that holds all of them. If I get any more, I'm going to have to get more shelves. Um, so Putz Houses originated, I think, around World War II time. Um, most of them, I'll show you here. Most of them were made in Japan, as were a lot of um, mid-century Christmas decorations. And um, they were created as ornaments for the most part. This one does have a part of a hanger on there. And a lot of them have the windows gone, but this cellophane, you could put a light in the back here and then they would be illuminated, kind of like our modern day Christmas villages. So I love the colors. I love that they took so much time in making these, making them seem special with the mica for the snow. So this is the first putt's house that I ever got, and it was actually 29 cents at Salvation Army. It started a collection. Since then, probably the most that I've spent on one would be like $15, I think this bigger church was a little bit more money, but for the most part, I try to stay around like five or six dollars to grab them. Um, they all have a lot of vintage character because they've been used, they've been in boxes, um, but I love that they've survived all of these years and just the stories that they have behind them, which is why I like all of the vintage Christmas. I think that by collecting them, I'm helping someone else's Christmas memories stay alive. <laughs> Thank you.
What do you think attributes your love of vintage? Because a lot of what you have in your home is thrifted or you got it in a state sale or it is a family piece. So like what, what attracts you to that? Um, I think I've always been a grandma. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I just am very, um, I love to think about the story of things and I know that Someday I will look back at my life and think, oh gosh, those were the good old days or whatever, you know. Um, but there's something about the past that I've always romanticized. I don't know what it is. I remember uh, my grandma was like the keeper of the things in her family. She was an only child and they were, um, it was a very Victorian notion to sort of keep everything, um, be very romantic and sentimental about things. And she definitely came out of that Victorian time period, she was a depression era baby, but um, she had that mentality and kept everything. And we'd go and visit and she just had boxes of things in her basement that she would let me just go down and spend hours just, and I was, I touched every single thing. So now that I have inherited those things and I've gone through the boxes, I tell my husband, I, I looked at these when I was 10 years old. Like I've been looking at these things for years and years, but they're just, I love the stories behind them. When I go to an estate sale, I try to always buy something, even if it's tiny, because I'm helping that person's legacy to live on a little bit. I just think that everything now we have is so throwaway. Like I can't imagine what our generation's estate sales are going to look like. Will there be anything? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I just think that for me at least, and I don't want to judge what other people do, but for me, the vintage has a story and it makes your home so unique versus, oh, I bought this at Target and a hundred thousand other people have it. So. You've probably seen a giant orange kitten in the videos. Um, we decided this year, he, while he's giant, he's not even a year old and he's very curious about things. Um, I was too scared to put my vintage uh, mercury glass ornaments on a tree, but I wanted a tree still. So I came up with a different idea that I think is super fun and um, still displays things, although this is not even close to all of my ornaments. Um, I had several of these canisters. I use them for everything. And some of these I just leave in all year round for storage, the mercury glass garland. That's a really great way to display it, um, but keep it safe. Um, and then several of the other ornaments I just keep in the canister. So I had to add a few to finish out the shelf. Um, but it's just a lot of fun to see them all in there sparkling together 
they're safe from um, little kitten paws, safe from my husband, honestly. Um, I know that in collecting vintage ornaments every year, a few get broken, so I'm okay with that. It's a reality, but um, I think this is just a super fun take on um, a Christmas tree. I put a mirror behind it to sort of reflect a little bit more of the light and tucked in greens, you can see we added garland to the back and zip tied it on there, um, wrapped it with a few lights and I think it's a lot of fun. These are like old school, um, like you would clip onto a tree candle, um, but obviously they're battery and I didn't use the clips. They did come with clips, but I just decided not to use them for this. Um, so they all operate with a remote and you can turn them on and off easily. Um, and then I just added this sort of um, string of lights, but I almost think that the batteries need changed. They're not super bright, but I like the different kinds of lights that are on there. You, you kind of touched on that you do have a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. but it looks so good and it doesn't feel like a hoarder <laughs> house, I yeah. guess, for lack of a better word. But, you know, it all feels very intentional and and um, cozy and not overwhelming. Like it, it just is a perfect match. So what do you think are some of the keys to decorating that way? Like, like how do, how do you decorate and, and, and achieve that? calmness but there's a lot yeah I think number one is having a color scheme which I know I have a lot of color going on so maybe it doesn't seem to some people that I do have but I really do have blues and pinks and reds and green um they're all woven together uh, when I bring things in that not that everything has to match but there are just certain things that I'll bring in and I'm like nope that doesn't work um you know there are lots of trends that I love and I used to shop for clients and so I'd be at TJ Maxx or wherever and I'd pick something up because I thought it was so cute and on trend and I would bring it home and it was just it it felt icky it didn't work um so I think just learning what your true style is and we all have evolving styles it's not always going to be the same um, I brought a lot of stuff here from our old house that I need to finally just let go. I'm not going to get it back to that place, um, and that's okay. Um, I think the key to having a lot of things is learning to have blank space in between them. So I'm very picky about spacing and things like that. So just learning what makes your, what makes your eyes feel okay with having a lot. There can be a lot on a shelf, but when your spacing is correct, um, it doesn't make it feel so overwhelming.
And you also talked about how trends are kind of evolving or, you know, have always evolved and our personal styles in our homes evolve, like maybe last house versus this house. So I know that you had an insane Pyrex collection. Mm -hmm. So kind of maybe walk us through what started that collection and then why you decided, okay, I'm ready to move on to the next collection. Um, it was just a moment in time. I actually had inherited, um, I actually have one right here. Uh, we ate out of little Pyrex. It came from the hostess set. Um, when we go to my grandma's house, we'd eat cereal out of these bowls. And when she passed away, I inherited the bowls and then the larger bowl that goes with it. So that sort of was what I started with. She also had the aqua bowls. Um, and I had to complete the set. The big one must've gotten broken at some point. So I was able to complete that set. Um, but just at that time, the thrift stores were amazing. No one really was reselling. Now you can't find one good thing. I mean, it really, really is difficult. Um, but at that time you could go in almost every day of the week and find a great pristine piece of Pyrex that did not have dishwasher damage. Um, so I had just really started, I love to thrift. I would go on my lunch hour and I was showing it in my stories on Instagram at that time. It was my personal account and people were like, are you keeping that? Are you going to sell that? So that's how my first little business started of buying and reselling. I would ship and pack on my lunch hour and it was terrible. And, um, I decided I didn't want to do that. So I had a crazy collection of Pyrex, which I absolutely loved. Um, but when we started talking about moving, I thought, I do not want to move all of this. And even what I kept was so much, um, to move. And I have purged a little bit more. There are still pieces that I will always keep. Um, I tried to keep the really unique ones. I tried to, um, stick to categories. So I love the casserole dishes. So I kept those. Um, I love the nesting bowls, but not necessarily the Cinderella bowls with the lips on them. Um, so I tried to stay within those categories, but I have one standout piece that if I found it, I would definitely buy it, the Atomic Starburst. But other than that, I don't really look for it. Um, I'll see it at the thrift store every once in a while, but you will. yeah, a, it's almost always dishwasher damaged or it's a pattern that I don't care about. Yeah. But I think it's good to learn what, what you're ready to let go of and it's okay. Uh, Jason still gets very sad when he sees the pictures of my collection. He thought it was really cool. And we had a lot of fun looking for it. Um, and I found most of it super inexpensively. And the pieces that I bought outright, like on Etsy or eBay, I was able to finance that by selling That's other awesome. pieces. So I also had a big thermos collection, um, but I sold almost all of that.
So we're also sitting underneath a light. So I know you said pretty much you've done cosmetic things to the house. Mm -hmm. So uh, you want to talk to us about this light? <laughs> like how did you, bam, know that this was like a good good fit? I just knew it. I saw it in the, it was a Gary shop. Mm -hmm. um, I had already replaced the pendant light that was here. So Jason was very confused why we were replacing the light again. But <laughs> Third time's a charm, yes, baby. Yes, this definitely is me. It felt so much better with what we have going on, just more my style. Um, I got it for a really reasonable price, and then I think I, all in I was a little over $100 with purchasing it and having it rewired and cleaned up. Um, I love the color. I love that it's vintage. Um, it has really clean lines. It was a, very important to me to have the visually have it be open because this is an open space, but it's also kind of small. Um, this is also where all of our windows are. So I didn't want to obstruct that view at all. So um, I don't know. I have a very strong gut instinct about most things that I do. And it just, I Works. just knew it. Yeah. yeah. So I've been wanting a frame TV for a while, but um, they're kind of expensive and the TV that we have works just fine. So um, my favorite product is Rub and Buff. So I actually just Rub and Buffed the frame of the TV that we already had. Um, I used a glove. I put some on a glove and kind of rubbed it on first and then used a paintbrush to go over that. Um, I love the effect of it. If I had it to do over again, I would have done the proper work and primed it with some paint so that the rub and buff had something um, a little bit better to adhere to. It doesn't like to stick to plastic very well, but I really like the way that it looks and it didn't cost me any money.
I had been wanting to collect jewelry trees, start a collection, buy one um, for several years, and I just passed them up. I didn't want to spend the money. And then finally last year, the one that's above our fireplace sparked my collection. And um, I felt like I got a good price on it, but it's definitely the most that I've spent on them. Um, so within a year's time, I bought seven. <laughs> Uh, between people finding them for me and me purchasing them. I just think they're really pretty. They all tell a story and I love that they spark a memory for people. So like my followers will always message and just say, um, that reminds me of my grandma's tree. I wonder what happened to it. Um, I want to make a tree of my own, things like that. So that's always something that's fun for me in collecting vintage is that um, it really does spark memories for people. Even if they don't have those items anymore, they can recall and remember happy times um, with their own families through my collections. So much like most of my collections, this was definitely an accidental one. I get asked a lot if I painted them. No, I have never painted one. Um, I want them because they're vintage and they're quirky and not perfect. Um, these two horses were the first ones that I ever got. I think I paid $5 for them at a flea market on the side of the road. Um, just digging through boxes, they were in there. I prefer them without the frame, so a lot of times if I have the option, I will ask the person if they'll take less. If I'm buying from a vendor, um, I'll ask if they'll take less if I don't buy the frame. But anyway, I had been collecting them. I've probably been collecting them maybe 12 years. Um, had started a little wall at our old house and then was just waiting to collect enough once we moved here to get a big wall filled. Um, I have a few more, so this collection could wrap around, but I'm not sure if I want that. Um, I really love the way that it looks and just appreciate all of the time that it took for people to create these. Probably my favorite ones are these Paris scenes because I love Paris, I love the colors and the subject matter, but I just think they're all a lot of fun.
tell me how you are the plant lady and um so I am a plant lady and I'm not a plant lady um <laughs> I if a plant is on its last leg I am fine throwing it in the trash um I don't baby them I might fertilize once in a while um I love to look at them what I have good luck with is great the other ones I don't care this one hanging up it's just never been very good so it might go go away at some point but yeah I have learned the ones that I do have success with this is a northern facing window which is kind of strange that the plants thrive there but they really really do um, my orchids do great I have one that's reblooming for the third time I love them but I don't pay a lot of attention to them I would just say if somebody's interested in collecting um, vintage Christmas, look for it year round. Um, I am always looking. A lot of the thrift stores, everyone's getting greedy because they know that <laughs> the resale market is so hot. Um, but a lot of the thrift stores will have it out year round. Some of them save it all up for one big hurrah, um, which is fine. They, you know, do it however. Um, but just always be looking. There's normally an aisle of just whatever and pick through it look through the boxes look through the mixed bags of ornaments uh one of my followers messaged me yesterday and said she found a little santa mug in one of the mixed bags of ornaments so she said for 250 she got i mean that's crazy yes because they go for a lot of money um so just always be looking look at garage sales um i tend to go to you know some people might think oh i'm gonna go to the ritzy neighborhood if you're looking for clothes or whatever that's fine but if you're looking for vintage, go to the older neighborhoods. Go where you think, you know, original owners are still living. Um, estate sales are a great place. If you go to an estate sale, go to the basement. That's probably where the Christmas is going to be. Um, or an upstairs attic or something like that. So I'm constantly on the lookout. Um, I try to, we've talked about Facebook Marketplace before. I've tried to train my Facebook to show me that kind of stuff. It's usually overpriced, but sometimes you can get a good deal on it. But if it's important to you and it's something that you want to get into, uh, definitely just be on the lookout all the time. If anybody wants to come follow you, <laughs> I, you do have a YouTube channel, I do. although I don't think you ever post on YouTube. I haven't posted on it in ages, <laughs> although there's a lot of thrifting stuff on there. I look yeah. a lot different. I'm about 80 <laughs> pounds lighter since the last video I posted. That so. would be crazy. You should yes. just do one I know. because of that. I so. know. So where are your focal points as far as Instagram, Facebook, and your website? I'm guessing, but you want to share with us your handles for those? Yes, and I'm sorry that they're so convoluted. Instagram is Hillary Prawl. Facebook, Hillary Prawl blog. Um, I'm having a new website built. Eventually, you'll find me at HillaryPrawl.com, uh, but right now it's hprawlandco.com. So, uh, <laughs> but you can find everything, everything on my Instagram. Yeah, all, and I'll drop all, all that down in the description so you can just click and go and follow Hillary. Well, thank you so much for doing this, letting us see your house. <laughs> I mean, it's good, honestly, any time of the year, but <laughs> Christmas is just kind of extra because... Yeah. It's things that everyone doesn't have. I mean, even if you thrift stuff, everyone doesn't have that, but they definitely don't have the... The quantity? <laughs> yes, the extra, the extra, extra Christmas that you I have. love it. I can't not buy it. Jason's like, why are you... I well, and you've said you've tamed down, too. I so have. There's very... not as much maybe out as in yeah. past years, and it's still gorgeous to look at. I mean, I guess when you have so much, you can pick and choose... This year I'm gonna do this, and this year I'm gonna do this. Yeah, and I have been weeding. I've been weeding now, but I bought more ornaments the other day. When I find them, I mean, they do break. They get broken, and you know, you want to use them for different purposes. So if I can find a good deal, I'm gonna buy them. Awesome. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for sharing your home with yeah. us. <laughs>